uh, what was I saying? Until you upgrade and then purchase um, subs until you until you purchase a subscription. Why is that so hard to say? <laughs> Why is it so hard to say? Welcome back to another video. Today I have my laptop with me, and if you have watched me for a couple of years, you probably know what that means. It means that I have been a good little fraghead, and I have been tracking. <laughs> the wares of all of my fragrances this year. So just a quick debrief. If you want, if you're not interested in the backstory, then there'll be timestamps below if you want to skip forward to where I talk about the fragrances. But during my no by year, I set up an air table, which I did a couple of videos on that I used to track what I was wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was also a really good place for me to record what I was sampling and my notes on those samples. So I really, really enjoyed using my air table. And the thing that I really enjoyed about it is that it's an app on your phone and you could set it up with, you know, drop down lists and stuff just to make it really easy to put the data in. And I was just using a free version of Airtable and what I didn't realize was that if you go beyond a certain data capacity then you can no longer add to your Airtable unless you purchase a subscription and the subscription is not inexpensive. I think it's about 20 US dollars a month or something and I thought I don't know if I can justify that just to record perfumes. I wasn't using it as a productivity tool or anything like that so I didn't do that but then the hunt was on as to how else was I going to record uh, I struggle with spreadsheets specifically just because on my phone I find Excel spreadsheets or utilizing Excel spreadsheets a little bit clunky. And the other thing too is that what I liked about the Airtable was that it didn't matter what time of day it was. It was really easy to just open my phone and record the data. My concern was that if I resorted back to a physical notebook, I wouldn't always have that notebook with me. But as it turns out, in January this year, I ended up implementing some other little habits that have kind of stuck and one of those habits is at the end of the day I have a little journal that sits next to my bed and I've just been writing down little thoughts. Sometimes it's thoughts on gratitude or sometimes it's just if something has been bugging me about how I handled something throughout the day I can just write down some thoughts about what lesson was learned and how I could you know improve that behavior next time or you know just little stuff like that just just random stuff and it's this just this tiny little notebook and at the top of every page I write down my scent of the day, my scent of the night and any other fragrances that I wore like say if I went to the gym or if I took the dog for a walk if I wore a specific fragrance for that then I'll record that so it's rec all recorded in one place it's something that I do before bed every night so I'm not on my phone I'm actually physically writing with a pen and paper which I, I really enjoy and I like doing that at night time because I don't want to be using my phone in bed at night time so that has been working really really well for me it's still a little bit clunky because at the end of the month I had to sit down and go through that and import manually all of that data into a spreadsheet which I could then utilize to figure out what I wanted to talk to you about. So it's possibly not as seamless as the Airtable but at the same time at least I've got a record. So pretty much for all of 2023 I didn't have any record. I think I recorded a f the first few days in 2023 and then my Airtable got to capacity and I just didn't have the mental bandwidth at the time to figure out what else I wanted to do. So I just didn't do it. But after doing this for the month of January, I'm really liking this system, even though it's a little bit more clunky. Anyway, that's a very long-winded intro, but some people have been asking about my Airtable and actually that was one of the questions on my Q&A video, which I still haven't filmed part two of yet. Hopefully that'll be today. But in any case, I, I guess the crux of all of this is I am now recording my data again. Okay, well, let's get into the top 10 fragrances that I wore in January. I, I should actually clarify, I think, how the list works. I've put them in order from 10 to 1, but a lot of them have been worn the same amount of times. And so there's not really a ranking. I'm not ranking them in terms of favorites. I'm just, I, really how I did it was I took the top 10 of the ones that have been the most worn and then 
whatever order they appeared in in the spreadsheet is how they appeared in this list. So it's really, I guess, the order in which I reached for them throughout the month. So in total, I did wear 43 fragrances in January. I did sample a few things throughout the month of January, but I didn't actually wear any samples as my full scent of the day. I was literally just testing things. So um, for that purpose, for this video, all of these are full bottles, except for number 10 in the list, which is a travel size. And this is a travel size of Levant by Ormond Jane. I wore this three times and I'm really enjoying this one. I did buy myself a bottle of Tanja for Christmas last year, and that uh, is a very vanillic sort of orange blossom. It's got a lot of body to it. This also has orange blossom in it, but it also has lily of the valley. And it's also much more translucent in how it feels. It doesn't have that punch that Tanja does in terms of the, the body of the florals that are in here. I think this also has peony in it. Uh, it has been compared a lot to Fleur Narcotique. And I will say that despite the fact that I struggled with Fleur Narcotique because there, I think it's the musk note in that, the white musk that is just really piercing and headache inducing for me. This one is much softer and I think wears a lot more delicately than Fleur Narcotique. So this one, I really loved the scent profile of Fleur Narcotique, but I couldn't wear it because it was too punchy and it gave me a headache. This one does not do that. So I don't think that they're exactly the same. I do still feel that Fleur Narcotique, the scent profile is slightly different and it's more musky. Whereas this I think has more of maybe a fruit, slightly fruity edge to it. But I do think maybe the floral profile in here is very similar to Fleur Narcotique. I know it's been said many times already. That's why I decided to circle back to this one after a couple of years of pretty much ignoring it. I know it got lots of love a couple of years ago and then more recently because of this comparison to Fleur Narcotique I think it's been getting a lot more attention and that is why I circled back to it. I have to say I'm really enjoying it and I would love to get a full bottle of it. I just don't think I can justify that just yet because I did just buy a full bottle of Tanja. I think there was one day where I wore it fully as a scent of the day but primarily how I enjoyed wearing this is by using it as a refresher in the afternoon. So we're in the middle of summer here. It's very hot. It's very humid. The weather is disgusting. And I found this one to be a really nice one to spritz on sort of after lunch when my percent of the day maybe is wearing down, my body's heated up, I've probably been sweating at some point, And uh, I just found this one to be a nice little refresher and spritzer for the afternoon while I was, you know, still at work or whatever and I still wanted to smell nice but I didn't want to you know overpower anyone. So that is Levant by Ormond Jane. So the next one is Neroli Mediterraneo by Paris Monte Carlo. As you can imagine it's primarily a Neroli scent. This one I purchased towards the end of last year in the Black Friday sales and it was like the perfect addition for that time of year. Again, this is a really beautiful one to wear on really hot, sticky, humid days. I do feel like the Neroli is front and center, but not for the entire length of the wear. When I first spritz it on, I get lots of citruses and particularly I do get um, a bitter orange note, although I wouldn't necessarily call it orange. This has a very green tone to it. And I do get the Neroli up front as well. And after the sort of initial spark Darkly citrus opening settles down you get much more of that neroli coming through there's a little bit of heat there I think there's pepper and maybe ginger in here although I can't say I necessarily detect a ginger note I definitely get pepper and spice and and in that mid dry down you do get that spice but these spices are also supported by this beautiful soft slightly soapy um, floral neroli blend and it's really really nice and then after a few hours on the skin I find this settles very much into um, a musky iris that has a neroli undertone so at that point I feel like the neroli is if not taking a back seat it's sort of just sitting side by side with this really pretty fluffy iris but it's not powdery it's just this sort of musky translucent feel and I, 
I think it's lovely. The scent profile of this is really, really fantastic. So that is Neroli Mediterraneo by Peris Monte Carlo. Next up is an old fave. This is Byredo's Gypsy Water. I always don't know whether I should say gypsy or not. I know that a lot of people just call it G Water. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to feedback on that about what I should do in that regard. This one is a translucent vanilla scent but it's not a gourmand vanilla in my opinion. It's more of a dark vanilla bean kind of vanilla. Having said that, this isn't leathery or anything like that either. Prominent profile of this to me is it's very cypressy. I think there's juniper in here. So it has that really alpine fresh sort of vibe to it, but then there's also incense in here. So it has that bit of darkness as well, which I think is why my brain perceives this as a sort of van dark vanilla pod rather than ice creamy or sweet vanilla. There is a little bit of sweetness in here, but to me that's more of an undertone to the fragrance. It's really mostly about the the juniper, that cypressy, piney kind of feel and the incense. Again, I mean, it's been talked about many, many times and many times by myself as well. I just find it to be a very easy thing to wear and particularly an easy thing to wear in hot weather. Next up is somewhat of a surprise if you haven't been following me on Instagram and this is Dama Bianca by Zerzhov Casamirati. I obviously only have the little baby bottle uh, for good reason and that reason is that I kind of poo-pooed this fragrance some time ago <laughs> when I sampled it. This is primarily again a vanilla leaning fragrance. Um, it's quite ethereal and musky but it has this opening which is meant to be a kumquat note but to me, it comes off as being also a little bit boozy. So you've got this sort of boozy, fruity opening, and then it sort of develops into this really vanilla-y, violet-y, musky perfume. It is beautiful in the dry down. I cannot deny it. I do like the dry down of this. I find it to be very innocent smelling, very pure. I still struggle a little bit with that opening. So I think the sample that I had when I first sampled this back in, I think 2022, I think it might've been during my no buy year. I felt like it was really, really boozy, but I think the sample had gone off, but I still do get a little bit of that boozy edge, but it doesn't punch me in the face as much as that sample did. I feel like this is a lot lighter. Um, it's a lot more wispy and that boozy element to the fruit dies down and then this beautiful violety musky vanillic floral uh, comes forward so re it is really beautiful i i think because of that opening i can't say it's a dead set hands down love for me i do enjoy the dry down i will continue to wear this bottle but i don't know if i would repurchase it in the future but who knows by the time i get to the end of this bottle i might have completely changed my mind and go I love everything about this fragrance and that happens sometimes sometimes it goes the other way I finish a bottle and I go I never want to see that again so I I have recorded four wears of this this month I did set myself a challenge throughout the month to wear it every single day of one week in the month because I wanted to see if I could force myself to love that opening as much as I love the dry down and I think I got through four days, obviously, consecutively. I didn't make it through the entire week, but I do think I got to a point where I really, truly did um, appreciate wearing it. I liked wearing it and I got to a point where I put it on and yeah, okay, the opening still bothered me a little bit, but I knew that it's only going to last a couple of minutes and then it'll start to transform. So it didn't bother me that much, but I felt like after four days... I'd had enough and I wanted to move on to something else. So that was Dama Bianca. Next up is an Amouage. This is a new Amouage in my collection. It's not a brand new bottle though. I bought it secondhand. This is Epic Woman. So funny story about this one. The very first Amouage I ever bought was a bottle of Epic Man. It was at a time when I was just discovering the house of Amouage, but my tastes in perfume for myself actually leaned more masculine and it was a toss-up between this or epic man and i ultimately went for epic man because uh matt and i had 
been together for about a year and I decided that I would buy him a bottle of Epic Man and then I figured I would get to smell it even if I wasn't necessarily wearing it and as it turns out he hasn't worn it that much. I think it might have been a little bit too much for him at the start because at that stage he wasn't really into perfume. I think now his tastes have developed a lot more and I might see if I can get him to circle back to it and see if he appreciates it a bit more now, now that it's a few years in. Yeah, so that was about four years ago. It was it was over four years ago because it was before I started this YouTube channel. But anyway, as it turns out, my tastes have changed during that time. And as much as I enjoy Epic Man, it's a lot spicier. I prefer the scent profile of this one. And I kind of have Pep from the Sentinel to blame for this because he started talking about this one and I thought, oh, maybe I should just, you know, revisit it because I obviously had smelled it before. I even had a little mini of it. And then somebody messaged me on Instagram and asked me about whether or not I had Epic Woman. And I said, yeah, I've got this little mini. And for that reason, I pulled it out. I had a little play with it and I started wearing it throughout the course of November and December last year. Of course, I finished the little mini and went, I'm not finished. I'm not, re I'm not ready to be done with this fragrance yet. So I went onto the Facebook group. I found an old post of somebody who had posted this for sale last year and it looked like it hadn't sold. So I just took a punt and emailed them and said, Hey, by the way, do you want, do you still have that bottle of Epic Woman and do you still want to sell it? And he wrote back and he said, yeah, I've still got it. I'll sell it to you. There we go. And now that person is kind of an online friend for me. And uh, I think he might be coming to a sniffy that we're all going to later today. So it'll be fun to see him again. Anyway, this one I prefer over Epic Man because it's less peppery and more incense-y. So the, and the incense is like really soft um, and smooth, but then the rose in here is just it is to die for and that's really I think where Pep sold me on this was the way he talked about the rose in here really had my interest peaked because I hadn't really paid that much attention to it previously and you know in fact maybe that's why I preferred Epic Man over this one because I feel like that spice in Epic Man kind of competes or drowns out the rose a little bit or changes the rose and you know back then I wasn't a huge rose fan so but I can't deny that I really love this one now. So I'm glad I have it. You know what? I should have just bought the woman version from the start because even Matt likes this one. So I think if I'd bought this back at the start, he probably would have worn it more than he did the Epic Man. So, so that's Amouage Epic Woman and I wore it four times. Next up is Narciso Rouge. I've talked about this quite a lot lately too. This I wore four times in the month of January. This is one of my favorite Narciso fragrances at the moment. I do still really love and wear quite frequently the Musk Noir, but that is one that I mostly prefer to wear at nighttime actually, but this one I like to wear during the day and I like to wear it to work. Uh, this has a iris in the base, but it's got this sort of candied violet going through it in the opening in the mids. There's a bit of rose in there as well. It has this sort of a bit of a pink vibe to it. But after a few minutes, that sweetness settles down and you get more of this iris coming out. So you've got this beautiful Narciso musk with some really pretty florals like violet and rose, etc. But then you get this beautiful iris coming through as well. It's just so easy to wear. It's really, really elegant. And yeah, I don't know if I have much more to say about it, actually. It's just a really easy perfume to wear. Like I said, it's very pretty. It's very elegant. It makes me feel very clean. So I wore that four times. Next one is one that I'm not sure I've really spoken about that much on this channel uh, previously. This is a bottle that I bought last year after years of having it somewhere on, on my wish list. Like it's always been on my radar. Just never really got around to getting it. This is this is her <laughs> by Zadig and Voltaire. I think ultimately what got me over the line in terms of actually bumping it up the priority list on my wish list was uh, Sam from My World of Fragrance did a video with her sister and this was her sister's signature, I think, for a while. I mean, it's an interesting one for me to have been reaching for so much in January given how hot it was because it is sort of a lactonic, milky kind of fragrance. Now, there are sort of two camps of people with this fragrance. Some people say it's milky and lactonic and other people say it's not milky and lactonic. 
I kind of understand both arguments. I feel like there is kind of a milky vibe to this. That was Matt blowing his nose. So, but this also is quite spicy and peppery and I think that's what turns some people off because they feel like the spice clashes with this milky creaminess that the sandalwood gives. I actually really like it for that reason. If it was just milky, I don't think I'd like it as much. I feel like I need that spice in here to really lift it and give it something just that little bit extra. So there's a little bit of bite in there. All of that said though, there are gourmand notes in here. So there is, I think, chestnut and a whipped cream note. But I think coupled with the woods in here and the, the pepperiness, it doesn't come off as being full-blown gourmand. So if you're a massive gourmand lover, then maybe this won't be for you for that reason, because it, it those spices and the woods tone down the gourmand element of this. But if you're like me and you don't really like gourmands that much, then this is a really sort of gourmand leaning sort of fragrance, but it doesn't feel like you've slathered yourself in whipped cream or chestnut cream or anything else. All right. So that is, this is her by Zadig and Voltaire. I wore it four times and I mostly wear it at nighttime, I think is where I was getting to <laughs> with that whole discussion about the heat. Uh, yeah, I wear this, I've been wearing it mostly at nighttime. And uh, I think also the spiciness and the woodiness of it also helps to make it more wearable in hot weather. But I've just, I have really been, I find it quite addictive. So that is, this is her. All right, next up is a fragrance that I always said I probably would never wear in summertime. And yet here I am. It's in my top 10 worn in January of 2024. This is Sunshine Woman by Amouage. I think we've all heard about this a million times. Now I know that a lot of people do talk about this being a very sunny scent and I agree. I mean the fruits in here, you know, you've got this sort of osmanthus that gives it a leathery fruity vibe. It feels a little bit like apricot. Um, there's a bunch of florals in here. There's lots of tonka in here as well. There's that a white tobacco note, which is very delicate, I think, in this fragrance. So how this came about was that I just had an evening, there was one evening where I was looking at my perfume cabinet and going, what do I want to wear? And I just, I just got out of the shower, so I had clean skin and I was like, what am I going to wear tonight? And I saw this and I went, you know what, I haven't worn Sunshine Woman in ages. And we did have the air conditioning on, so it wasn't like I was going out into the heat. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to wear that. And so I did. And I went, oh yeah, I forgot how much I love this fragrance. Instantly, my brain just went ping, 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 ping. <laughs> and like all the pleasure centers lighting up. And I went, oh, yeah, that was a good choice. And then the next day I was getting ready for work and I put on this Chanel body cream. This is my favorite body cream at the moment. It's the Chanel number no. five body cream, but it's, it, it kind of leans more Chanel Eau Premiere, but not exactly. I think it's a bit more floral. It's actually a beautiful formulation. It feels gorgeous on the skin and it's so silky. But anyway, we're not talking about the cream. But the thing is the scent of this is really quite powerful and it's very long lasting. And you put this on, you will smell it for hours. And I put that on and then I put this over the top, which some of you might be going, ugh, yeah, that is such a weird combination. And indeed, it is kind of a weird combination. But do you know what? It worked and it worked so well. I wore it for three days in a row. Although that said, I mostly wore it at night time for the last two times that I wore it. Brilliant combination. I don't know why it works. It is really weird, but it just works. I don't know why. Um, I think because particularly for me, because this one is one that I struggle to wear in the heat because I find it very, like it's more of a cozy scent to me. Um, but I think this makes it more fresh and clean smelling so that it sort of works better for hot weather. I don't know. I'll, all I know is that I wasn't expecting it to smell that good to start with, but I knew this would fade ultimately. But when I spritzed this on, I just went, oh, 
Wow, that is that actually smells really, really nice. And I made a mistake. I wore it five times, not four times, five times. Okay, number two in the list. Uh, we're now into the six times wear category. This is Misancia Poudre d'Or. Now the story for this one is that during my no buy year in 2022, my dear perfume friend Chrissy sent me a 10 mil decant of this. Actually no, she sent me a sample of this and then I said, I need more of that. <laughs> and so I think ultimately I ended up buying a 10 mil decant. I think I bought the 10 mil decant. I don't think she gave that to me. That would have been very generous if she did that, which she is, but um, I would not have accepted this one and this one was hard is hard to get in Australia because it's not actually sold in Australia you have to get it from Selfridges so the weird thing about I, I think I must be manifesting perfume into my life because I'd got that decant I wore it a few times and then I ended up getting distracted on other things and then towards the end of last year I was going through some decants and stuff and thinking oh, I need to start pulling some of these out and putting them on the shelf so that I wear them because you know the decants can go off and or and or they evaporate so I just thought I, I better start wearing this stuff so I pulled out my little decant of this I put it on the shelf and I started wearing it and I kept wearing it until I used the whole thing up and I was obsessed with it for a little while so I finished up my decant of it and I just thought, oh, I'll see how I go. But after a couple of weeks, I was thinking, oh, I really actually miss it because I have been, I wear this on its own, but I also layer it with other things. And, and so I, w I actually went onto the Selfridges website that night and put it in the cart. And then I was sort of going, oh, do I really want to drop 300 and something dollars on a perfume right now? Because it was Christmas time. I'd already bought a heap of perfume in the Black Friday sales. So I put it in the cart and I left it there for the time being. I thought I'll just leave it for 24 to 48 hours and see how I feel. The next morning I get onto the Facebook group and somebody has just posted a bottle of this for sale. So yeah I managed to pick it up for a really good price. Super super happy. Have been wearing it a bunch and yeah it's just it's such a cozy scent. Okay so what does this smell like? The marketing around this is that it's meant to be like golden powder and I agree it is it's a very it is powdery but it's not like talcum powder it doesn't it doesn't choke me but there is this powdery element it's almost like a mix of powdery and muskiness you know how muskiness can be fluffy but you know it's not necessarily it doesn't quite go to powdery well this does kind of go to powdery but it sort of sits in that musky fluffiness sort of mode as well so it's got this really beautiful fluffy musky vibe to it it does smell golden and at first I thought maybe the floral in here might have been you know orange blossom because it does have kind of an orange blossom vibe but it's not orange blossom it's actually tiare flower and pa para paradisone or paradisone which is um, I think a form of jasmine or it smells like jasmine and it's also quite sweet as well so there is definitely a kind of a vanillic sweetness and maybe even like it almost comes off a little bit like tonka but not almondy. I don't know it's very it's very hard to describe actually this one but it is so so pretty and it just the overall feel is that it does feel golden it feels kind of fluffy powdery and it feels kind of solar as well it feels warm I don't know it's it's magical I really really like it and I'm so glad I didn't hit buy that evening because otherwise it would have cost me a couple hundred bucks more than what I paid for it so Poudre d'Or by Misencia and then we are up to number one my most worn fragrance in January admittedly I wore it the most at the start of January I haven't really worn I didn't really wear it that much in the last couple of weeks of January but this was new early in January so that's why I was so obsessed with it uh, this is Rosendo Mateu number six I, I I haven't talked about it a lot but I have talked about this and this is a really uh, very solar do I want to say solar 
I feel like I want to say it's a very seductive tropical floral fragrance. There is tropical fruits in the opening. I don't really know what fruits are in here, but I feel, you know, they kind of feel fleshy like a tropical fruit, you know, but they don't feel like super effervescent or translucent like a fruit juice. It doesn't, not citrus is what I'm getting at, I guess. Lots of tropical florals. You know, I think like jasmine and ylang ylang. And, and then it has this spicy, musky base that's blended with, I guess, some woods and most likely probably sandalwood. I haven't looked at the notes for a really long time. But this is, and I hate saying it because I, I actually really hate describing fragrances this way, but it's a very sexy fragrance. It's very seductive. I've, you know, when I, when I wear this, when I smell this, I imagine being at like a beach party where people are wandering around there's you know those open flame torches sort of spotted around and the women are wearing all of these really strappy dresses they've got this gorgeous glowing golden skin and this is what they smell like you know they're very beautiful very seductive it feels like holidays inhibitions are low <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's the image that comes to mind when, when I smell this fragrance. And I'm very, very happy to have it. I did make the mistake one day of wearing it very early in January. I did a course and I wore it one day into the classroom and no one said anything. And I think it was fine because I didn't like overspray it or anything, but I did feel really odd like I felt like I was out of place because this fragrance was not the type of fragrance that <laughs> you wear in a classroom but it, it had just come in the mail and I wanted to to wear it because I, I really really love it so um, that is Rosendo Mateo number six they've listed jasmine sandalwood and oriental musk as a scent profile and I I agree but I do think there is a sort of a tropical fruit element in the top it's very soft it's not like punchy fruit it doesn't smell like a fruit cocktail but there's just these really soft fruits in the opening that transition you into this really lovely spicy musky jasmine base and i wore this six times funnily enough i have been talking for a little while so i think this video is long enough but if you want to stick around for a couple more minutes i'll literally just run through the list of the other fragrances that i wore and how many times i wore them so after levant i wore solar blossom by misencia two times tanja by ormond jane two times champaka by ormond jane two times pure extreme by m Micalef, two times Santal Complet from Fragrance du Bois, two times. Is Santal Complet or Santal Complet? I don't know. But anyway, I wore it two times. Iris De by Puente Parfums. That's a new one. And I just received the 20ml bottle that I ordered after finishing my sample. So I wore that two times. Musque Noir by Narciso, two times. Unui by Jeroboam, two times. Anamkara by Ducida Parfums, two times. The Favourite by Penhaligans, two times. New Look 1947, two times. Material by Amouage, once. Tolu by Ormond Jane, once. Tonka Imperial, all, all the rest of them are once, so let's take that as a given. Tonka Imperial by Galan. Eden by Puente Parfums, that was also a sample that got worn once. Jubilation 25 by Amouage. Dear Woman by Amouage. Musque Noir Rose by Narciso. Guidance by Amouage. Velvet Rose and Oud by Joe Malone. Fleur de Louis by Arquiste. Fleur de Rain by Maison Godet. Gabriel Essence by Chanel. J'adore L'Or, the 2010 version by Dior. Viva La Fleur by an uh, Australian brand called Flanay. Vanilla Powder by Matière Première. French Flower by Matière Première. Hydra by Parfumade, which is one that I picked up in Italy. Parisian Musk by Matière Première. Musk Therapy by Initio, that's a decant. Um, Pure Poison by Dior. 
another 13 by Le Labo, that's also a sample, and Honor 43 by Amouage. They are all the fragrances that I wore in January. Thank you so much for joining me. Please let me know what you wore in January. Obviously we're in summer, but a lot of you will be in the dead of winter. So curious to know what you wore. And I have to go have a coffee now. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye.